Dudes, welcome to Sense of Style. I'm Stuart. Eight fragrances that I would purchase if I was starting over. Now, normally I have like a, a spending limit for this, like my house burns down and I only have 300. I am not doing that today. This is an unlimited amount of money I have to replace my collection if I was starting over again, knowing what I know now about myself and about what fragrances are good which eight fragrances from my collection would I start over with? Let's get to it. Fragrance number one, Le Mal, Le Parfum. And yes, I have tried Elixir quite extensively, actually. And really, when it came down to this or Elixir, that really was the choice. And oh my God, I love the first hour of Elixir. One of the nicest experiences that I've had with fragrances. It's gorgeous. It's both powerful and subtle at the same time. I love the sweetness. But one thing really surprised me. After about an hour, I started to pick up a little bit of lavender and I got something quite familiar and it was this. It was very familiar, very similar to this after the first hour, except with Elixir, it's a little bit sweeter than this. This is a spicier version. This has a lot of cardamom and also has oriental sort of a generic spicy notes. And so this balances to me, to me, balances the spiciness and the sweetness a little bit better than elixir. Uh, I do love the open. This does not have the open. This also does not have the same level of performance. It's very good performance, but not quite as crazy. The dry down is a larger part of the fragrance. I prefer the dry down here. I am familiar with this. So I'm going with this. And a lot of people might be going, oh, that's sacrilegious. You know, Elixir is the fragrance of 2023. People forget this was a fragrance of 2020. And this rating is actually higher for this on Fragrantica than even for Elixir. This is a big boy too, you know. It's not all about Elixir. I think that opening, that early part of Elixir, I think a, I think a lot of that was marketing. I think most people, you know, that's the part that they notice, and then they go, oh, I love this. I'm going to buy it. But, you know, I prefer the dry down. Fragrance number two was the same principle. It was a battle between two fragrances. This is Givenchy Gentleman EDP uh, Boise. This is the woodier version of the Givenchy Gentleman. I have the EDP. I prefer this. Now, I've also tried the Reserve Privé. And I love that. It's got a little bit of, I don't know if it's toffee or it's caramel kind of feel. I love that too. I don't know which I like more, this or Reserve Privé. But I think even if I had purchased Reserve Privé, I would go for this for a very simple reason. Look at me, you know, like I'm in my mid 50s. I, I don't think it would work well for me for practical reasons to be smelling like caramel on a regular basis. This is sweet enough for me. This is the woodier version. I think this is a more practical choice for me. I think this is what I would probably go with. Now, this does have a chocolatey feel. It's got a mixture of cacao and patchouli. It creates a chocolatey kind of accord. It is very sweet as well. I notice the iris a little bit more in this. It's not hidden by the sweetness quite as much. It's got lots of woods. This is, this is the one for me, though. Battle number three. <laughs> this is Dior Um 2020. Now, this is my 20 milliliters of Dior Um 2020. A 20 milliliters for me, you know, <laughs> that's a lot for me. I, 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 it's going to take a long time for me. To, but yeah, I would still go with this over the fragrance that it was, you know, battling off with. And that was uh, Dior Um Intense. I never thought I would ever say that. But I, I just, I love this. I didn't realize how much if I until I had to make that decision. Dior I'm Intense or this. I love Iris, but I already have an Iris fragrance on this list. So, yeah, it was just like this, I think, is the best <laughs> woody fragrance that there is right now that, that I've tried anyway. To me, the only com the competition for this would be Creed's Royal Oud, and it's close. But I'm going to go with this one. I never thought that I would say this, but I think this is a little bit more formal, a little bit more expensive smelling than even Royal Oud. So this has four 
woody notes. It's got isoe, super, cashmere. In. It's also got vetiver and cedar. It's got some musk. And cashmere is a musky, woody note anyway. So it's, it's kind of a musky, woody. It's very versatile. It's got really good performance. You can wear this to meet the prime minister. You can wear this to go streaking. I mean, whatever. This is pretty versatile. I think with this, it boils down pretty simply to woody fragrances are great for a lot of things. Very versatile, but they're boring. This is not boring. Fragrance number four is really kind of personal. You'd have to know me to really understand it. This is Aqua de Parma Colonia. And, you know, as far as the scent goes, this is good, but not great. Why is it on this list? It's niche. It's not cheap. It's pretty simple. I'm a huge movie buff. I even made a short about this. Nobody watched it, uh, but I liked it <laughs> because I really like movies. This is the fragrance of Hollywood in the 1950s. This was Cary Grant. Uh, Cary Grant, uh, a lot of people don't know him, but he's basically Tom Hanks, but way better looking. You know, if Tom Hanks were great with the ladies, you know, that that's who Cary Grant was. I don't think there's a cooler uh, actor in Hollywood history. He loved this. Audrey Hepburn loved this, too. That's why I really like it. Now, it is a good fragrance, too. 1916, so it's a little old-fashioned. A lot of lavender, and uh, it's got a lot of citruses as well, Italian Calabrian citruses, um, and it's got some musk. So it's got good performance for a fresh fragrance, for a citrusy type of fragrance, but really, I just would want to have this in any collection that I have. Fragrance number five, another battle. This is Ombre Leather, and I have a Rasasi's La Yucuam, which is a clone of Tuscan Leather by Tom Ford. And I actually prefer the darker leather. I prefer I, I, I prefer Rasasi La Yucuam to this. It is a little darker, a little bit richer. Uh, let me see the, the front. Uh, yeah, it's a little darker, a little richer. But I went with this just for sheer practical reasons. This I can wear in the spring. And look, you're already sort of pushing the envelope wearing a heavy, strong leather fragrance. Anyway, why make it worse and make it darker? This is more practical for me. I'm more likely to wear it. This is also quite sweet in a, in a kind of different way. It's got a lot of amber in it. It's got a lot of jasmine and yeah, a ton of leather. But yeah, this one, I mean, look, I, I don't, I shouldn't really have to explain ombre leather. Like this is a classic. I mean, we all love it. How many times have I said battle? Got another one. Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit to Le Parfum. And I know you guys like this one more. I know you do. I know you do. Not me. I like the old school one. I'm sorry. This to me, <laughs> I don't know, something about this that just drives me crazy. I don't know what's in this really. Like it's got a lot of leather and a lot of violet leaf. And then it's got 18 other notes. If I was to sit here and explain to you how it comes to this scent, I would be lying. <laughs> I have no idea. It's like a witch's brew, but man, I love it. I don't think it smells like gasoline. I think that's a general description. All I know is women hate it, <laughs> but I love it. I love it. This is one of the fragrances that every now and again, when I smell it, it still gives me chills. Honest to God, it was close though. I mean, I love Le Parfum. This, if I was going to modernize Fahrenheit, this is what I would do. But uh, yeah, it just loses a little bit of the edginess that this has. Fragrance number seven, this is Mancera's Oud Vigny. And if I had done a list a year ago involving this fragrance, it would have been on the eight fragrances that I hate the most. However, I'm a little bit uh, nerdy when it comes to things like this. I didn't understand the note of Gayak wood, and that's really important. I thought I had a bad batch. I really did. This is oud and vanilla, and I didn't really know what Gayak wood did or how potent it is. It's kind of a burning wood sensation. Again, I talked about that in another video recently. That's what you get, uh, that burning wood sensation from by the fireplace. It's here, and it interacts a lot with the oud. You know, so a year ago, I would have been like, damn, uh, the oud in this is just not right. Now I'm like, oh, I love the complexity of the, the Gayak wood and the way it interacts with the oud. I, you know, like, I, I, I have done that. But yeah, like, I mean... I do like this fragrance. It's super strong, super powerful, so it works well in the winter. I don't know if it, maybe in the summer, this might not be on the list. I mean, we do change our tastes over time. It's not always going to be the same list, but yeah, I really do like this now, now that I understand it. Finally, we've got Amouage Reflection Man, and I talk about this so much, and I only have like, I don't know, four milliliters left, uh, but this is a fragrance, the one number one fragrance that I need to purchase. This is an absolute masterpiece. Probably if I buy this uh, and I get a full bottle, it will surpass Silver Mountain Water as my signature scent. I just find this to be 
uh, a little bit more refined. But I absolutely love this. It's a lot of iris. I do like iris, but it's done very differently, used differently than in all the other iris fragrances I have. It's combined with a couple of white florals, and uh, it smells like kind of distantly a little bit like Lamal, but way better. A uh, little bit of sweetness. Uh, I just sandalwood powdery sandalwood it's a very powdery fragrance very classy fragrance yeah i love this but yeah and, and bear in mind that this this list you know it'll probably change a little bit in a month or so i mean these things evolve over time but yeah that's what i would uh I'll go with cheers